Greetings to you, pilgrims on the way. We are grateful that you are joining us on this video journey that will take us through the way of the cross along a special and powerful path this Holy Week. The way of the cross has for centuries provided a devotional exercise for Christians everywhere to travel in heart and spirit to Jerusalem, to visit and to pray at 14 separate stations that recall the events at the end of Jesus's life. We journey from his condemnation to his death on the cross to his burial. In this way, we enter the suffering of Christ's passion in order that we might also enter into the fullness of Christ's resurrection. Humanity continues to grieve the heart of Christ. Among the sources of that grief is the tragedy of gun violence and gun deaths, which remain on the rise in this country. In Massachusetts, in an average year, 244 people die and 688 are wounded by guns. Guns are the fourth leading cause of death among children and teens in Massachusetts. And black children and teens in Massachusetts are seven times more likely than their white peers to die by guns. And so while Massachusetts does have very strong safety laws, our work is not done. To raise our awareness and to invite our collective prayer, witness and action, toward ending the scourge of gun violence, the Be Peace Network of our two Episcopal dioceses in Massachusetts offers this video pilgrimage. We will travel to 14 stations, Episcopal churches and ministry stations in our diocese from east to west. And each one at each location will help us to reflect upon Christ's passion and Christ's call to us to be peacemakers in this world. Let us now walk virtually and pray together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We will glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation our life and resurrection. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest, with the elders and the scribes, and the whole council, held a consultation. And they bound Jesus, and led him away, and delivered him to Pilate, and they all condemned him and said, he deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, 
but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. None of us has the right to condemn anyone to death. And yet each year, 30,000 of our sisters, sons, daughters, brothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, and mothers use guns to sentence others to death or to die by their own hands. Most of those innocent souls end up here in a cemetery. Many others survive, but bear physical and mental scars from which they will never fully heal, despite the best efforts of nurses and doctors. There is an epidemic of gun violence in our nation. Most of us are blind to or choose to ignore the tragedies of gun violence. We have failed to share the peace of Christ. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that was before its shear is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Hello, I'm Dave McCarthy. I'm a co-warden here at Christ Church in historic Swansea Village. I'm also a combat veteran of the Marine Corps in Vietnam. I'd like to talk to you now about post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD for short. Uh, today's veterans uh, suffering from PTSD also carry a burden that wasn't seen in other wars. And that's the plague of suicide. It's relentless. 20 veterans will die today by their own hand. Uh, that's twice the uh, general population, the rate in the general population. Uh, of those, 70% will die by, the, by firearms. That's compared to 45% of the general population. The experts say the key component of suicides among veterans is loneliness caused by isolation. The veterans carry these burdens by themselves. They suffer in silence with the shame of their feeling of not having done enough, their shame of having survived. Uh, we're reaching out to them here at Trice Church by embracing the Building Bridges program. Each month we have a free breakfast for veterans in hopes of getting them out of their isolation, hope, hopes of getting them out of their home bunker. Uh, so far we're averaging about 60 veterans a month and it's, uh, they, they all rave about the program. It's, it's, they like it. Uh, the church grounds are also a wonderful setting for the program because so many of our veterans suffer from moral injuries. They were acolytes or altar boys and a few years later they were in Vietnam or Iraq or Afghanistan killing people. Um, I suffer from PTSD. It's part of my treatment program at the VA. I see a psychologist every week and he's excellent. And he begins every session, he begins every, ends every session with his veterans by saying simply, no guns. He knows. Thank you. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. In 2019, there were 642 suicides in Massachusetts and 247 deaths by firearms. My son Van is counted in both of these statistics. Van was my first and my eldest, as I always called him. He joined our family at the age of eight and a half, and he made me a mom. He wasn't the easiest kid in the world, but he was a wonderful son, who I now think didn't get half of the good things that he deserved. I know I'm supposed to talk about gun violence and maybe offer some wisdom or some advice or something, but I don't have that. All I have to share is my experience of losing my son Van when he put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger instead of just coming home. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your days of mourning shall be ended. I'm the Reverend Liz Steinhauser. In September of 2012, a beloved young man who had grown up in the church and program where I work, St. Stephen's in Boston, was killed by a gun in front of his home on a sunny summer afternoon. In the fourth station, we traditionally say, a sword will pierce your own soul. For me, and for many of us who knew him, it was a gun that pierced our souls when George Fuentes was murdered. A gun filled our hearts with bitter pain. We gathered in grief, we cried, we got angry. And together we formed the Be Peace for George campaign and we began to act. We expanded our youth programs like the one you probably hear in the background right now. We partnered with public schools. We built communities of support for those in crisis. All these things help increase peace. We pressed state legislators for funding as research shows that increasing job opportunities for teens is the most effective way to help young people build skills and make positive decisions. We brought public attention to the role of gun manufacturers including Smith & Wesson in Springfield, Massachusetts. Our state is the number one producer of guns in the country, three million a year. BP asked executives at gun manufacturers to be more accountable for their products. We pray that happens. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they come upon a man in Syrian, Simeon by name, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We all carry the burden of the of gun violence, the victims, their families, the bystanders, our community, and even the police. We carry the burden of all who fear the impact of gun violence, known and unknown. We carry the names we know in our hearts. We remember Gina Flowers and, the, and his brother, Ronald. We walk with others in the suffering through prayers and protests. We must open ourselves to witness. We have to look out for one another. We walk with others by calling for stricter gun laws that protect us all. We walk with others by holding the police accountable. We recognize that we need new solutions. We do not blame anyone for their suffering. We work together even when it is hard. We remember one another by honoring the lives lost and the families who have been broken by violence and grief. We remember one another by listening to the stories we share personal and one the, on the news. We remember one another in prayer by keeping in touch, writing, and reaching out. We remember others by lifting each other up. We pray for the future where we can all be safe. We pray for the future where we burden the gun violence can be lifted from all us all. Holy God and Holy Lady, Holy and Royal One, have mercy upon us. wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of men. But he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. In the event of a woman, or as tradition has it, Saint Veronica, wiping the face of Jesus, we see her with pity and compassion kneeling down and wiping Jesus' tortured face. 
a beautiful example of tenderness in a moment of unbearable suffering. The more significant part of the story is that that tortured face of Jesus was imprinted forever on the cloth. In other words, that act of tenderness didn't wipe away the suffering, but actually imprinted it and preserved it like a painting, like a mirror even, stuck in stillness, always reflecting back the anguished face of Christ. This image, of course, captures a whole life. Christ is the crucified one, the suffering servant, the person of sorrows. And even as Christ is the resurrected one too, he's the resurrected one who bears his wounds and ours forever. We discover in this wounded face the wounds of the whole world, assumed and healed but never abandoned. As we pray the sixth station, we recall so many countless wounded lives, the victims of gun violence and their families. And we remember that with the suffering and wounded is where the whole Christ, the crucified one, is found. May their healing be illumined, O Christ, by the light of your wounded face. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. Seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Back in December of 2015, there was a shooting in San Bernardino, California. Muslim people were the perpetrators of that crime. And as a result, there was an uprising of anti-Muslim rhetoric, especially by political candidates. Because of all of that, I reached out to a local neighbor here in Southboro, a man I knew because our sons were in Cub Scouts together. He's Muslim. So we sat down and had a cup of coffee and shared our stories, the places where we had been and where we'd come from. And because of that conversation, we decided to do something more, establishing Neighbors for Peace here in Southboro, an organization that comes together to share meals, an iftar celebration nearly every year, a Thanksgiving service, but also to gather together at times of outpouring of grief or seeking peace. Vigils, both at the beginning of the year as we start the year in a new way, but also for tragedies like George Floyd's murder. And of course, last year around this time, for all of the anti-Asian hate that emerged because of the shootings in Atlanta. We stand together as people knowing that together, if we stand for peace, we can do so much more for our world. I hope that you will join your local communities to bond with those people who are much more alike than we are unalike, as the poet Maya Angelou puts it, and standing together to combat violence both in our own neighborhoods and around the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, 
have mercy upon us. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of people, and among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Station 8, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Here at Walking Together, we spend most of our time with folks on the margins of our society. Women and men who are unhoused or marginally housed, unemployed or underemployed. People who struggle with addiction and mental illness. People who confront violence regularly. But women hold this tangle of identity in different ways. They not only feel their own pain, but that of their partners, their parents, their children, and their friends. They try to put pieces back together. They tell the stories that keep memory alive. They hold the grief of their community. The women of Jerusalem met Jesus on the way to his crucifixion. They were there to bear witness. They were there to acknowledge his pain as well as their own. The women of this city of Worcester and the women of all cities and towns call us to remember. They call us to bear witness to the, our own pain and to theirs. They call us to reach out to Jesus. They call us to stand with them in solidarity, and they call us to act. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has besieged me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. Remember, O Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. We walk with Jesus alongside those who tread the path of desolation, the citizens of Ukraine and Russia, refugees throughout the world, families living with the unfathomable loss of their children. Columbine, April 20th, 1990. Sandy Hook, December 14th, 2012. Parkland, February 14th, 2018. Jesus falls a third time and we crouch with him, one arm on his sweaty, bloody shoulders, the other under his arm. He looks into our eyes with unshakable sadness and assurance. He winces when we press against the gashes in his back 
as we help him get up, his legs shaking, his body trembling. We steady his trembling body, no longer alone, forgiven and forgiving. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. My daughter, Megan Elizabeth Burns, Navy Corman, was murdered May 4th, 2019 in a double act of homicide, suicide. She was helping a friend. My pain and anguish have been crippling. There have been times when I find myself bent over, weak, and from crying. It is in these moments that I turn to God to get me through, breath by breath, moment by moment. Throughout my grief journey, my faith community has been a constant source of solace. From the moment we found out about Megan's death, they have surrounded us with love, upheld us, and grounded us. I hate to think that my daughter's life was lost in vain and believe that work needs to be done to end gun violence in our country. I have not had the energy to do this work as of yet. I have taken continual comfort in the knowledge that the church and others, such as bishops against gun violence, have been working to end such senseless loss. People have said to me, how can you still believe in God? My reply is and always will be, how can I not believe in God? God is love, God is hope. Otherwise, what is there to live for? Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and moral one, have mercy on us. Western Mass Regional Women's Correctional Center in Chicopee. Station 11. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him, and with him two criminals, one on his right, the other on the left, and Jesus in between them. And scripture was fulfilled, which says, He was numbered with the transgressors. When women come to me here at the jail and say they can't relate to Jesus, I remind them that Jesus experienced a lot of what they experience. Accusation, betrayal, humiliation, abandonment, and imprisonment. But for the women I know who have lost a child through the bullet, of a gun, I remind them that Jesus' own mother experienced that also. When Jesus was crucified, she didn't know about Easter. The women I know who have lost a child to a gun feel such gut-wrenching despair that they often lose hope. They've given up hope 
because when a child dies, it's hard to see what the future could possibly offer when the bottom has fallen out of your universe. Sadly, the loss of hope is often the catalyst that leads them to jail. Women often, not knowing how to cope, resort to alcohol or drugs, which in turn leads to bad choices, which in turn leads to jail. Sometimes jail is the first place where they begin to deal with their loss. It's not a great place to grieve. In a grief and loss class at our facility, I try to suggest that they find a purpose or a meaning to their lives that honors their child, rather than the self-destructive behaviors that landed them here. Christ's death had a meaning that the apostles didn't understand for some time. My prayer today is that mothers who have lost a child to gun violence will begin to find hope and meaning in their lives. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Twelfth station, Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples, whom he loved, standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And when Jesus had reached, has received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And then crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. Even in his abandonment on the cross from God, from everyone, Jesus still recognized his mother and his disciples surrounding him. He forgave the soldiers, recognized his beloveds, and surrendered his spirit to God before departing physically. No retaliation, no bad words said, nothing. In this very moment on the cross, this is so powerful. Jesus spent his entire ministry preaching about us, having the right attitude towards each other, to live a life of the Beatitudes, to love our neighbors and to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. Not only does Jesus command us to live a life full of love and compassion, with forgiveness for all, but also he was willing to make the ultimate example for us in his departure, symbolizing the personal sacrifice needed in our daily lives to be able to act righteously with those around us no matter who they are. The way of love is so serious that Jesus was willing to die for all humans, all beloveds, all enemies, all children of God. And in this day of pandemic problems and potential new wars, dig into the cross. Go deep with Jesus. Remember or understand how significant it is to stand steadfast in loving everyone you encounter. That was Jesus' call, and it's his beloveds as well who follow him. That is your call, today and every day. Remember to love everybody you encounter. Feel the desire to love everyone, and if you're struggling, go to the cross. Be transformed. As Jesus was called to love all and to point out his beloved, so too do we follow in his footsteps to call on others in our life and inspire them to also love and be transformed. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us.
The thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All you who pass by, behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping, my soul is in tumult. My heart is poured out in grief because of the downfall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. At the thirteenth station, we are invited into an intimate moment of pain. The body of Jesus, Mary's oldest son, is taken down from the cross and placed in her arms. Despite being falsely accused, she honors him with her tears. Against the onslaught of gun violence, it can be easy to forget that every victim is someone's child. Every victim has a name. Every victim, regardless of the circumstances of their death, is a beloved child of God, worthy of the same dignity that Mary gives Jesus. To honor these victims, every month we pray their names. With each name we remember that their deaths are bitter to us. Ryan Belbag, Troy Taylor, Gloria Robertson, Calvin Robinson, Dylan Dobbs, Nathan Mayfield, Adrian Ramirez, Atlanta Gibson, Randall Cohen, Tyrone Thompson. Carell Portis, Alejandro Vila, Orlando Monroe, Kimante Bland White, Stephen Harley, Gail Yvonne, Christian Holdman, Crystal Guevara, Lonnie Cole, Gary Elmore, Kimori Rogers, Elia Strebe, Gerald Streep, Terence Cannon, Isaiah Robinson, Johnny Thomas, Charlotte Foster, Charisse Foster, Stephen Foster, Haley Powell, Tyrin Young, Chance Marks, Leland Fox, Gerald Van Break, Brakel, Karen Young, Paul Brewley, Jonathan White, Terrence Hendricks, Tyshawn Robinson, Daniel Howard. Lazar Brown done it again. Alvanta Pointer, Rodney Phelps, Alexis Raimondo, Ronzia Atkins, Rico Hawkins, Santonio Beard, Emmett Stokes, Philip Dill, Jeffrey Churchill, Kendarius Barr. The 51 names you just heard read are only three and a half percent of the 1,400. 31 beloved children of God killed by gun violence this February alone. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. And we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock and he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not abandon me to the grave, nor, nor let your holy ones see corruption. In Massachusetts, 
An average of 18 children and teens die by guns every year, and more than three quarters of these are homicides. Gideon's Garden is the small way our church seeks to offer kids safety in our town. It's a place of community, a place of growth, and a place dedicated to the well-being of children and teens. We can't do much, we know, but we must do something. So together, we're planting a memorial wall of giant sunflowers here, one for each of the young lives lost every single year in our state. Every time another child is shot, we'll plant another seed, grieving as we bury it in the ground, and then remembering all that has been lost as we watch it emerge again from the earth and grow. Beyond that, we have no words. O oh God, your blessed Son was laid in a tomb, in a garden, and rested on the Sabbath day. Grant that we who have been buried with him in the waters of baptism may find our perfect rest in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God. Holy and mighty. Holy, immortal one. Have mercy upon us. We conclude our Stations of the Cross here at Smith & Wesson. You know, we just heard the 14th station where Jesus is placed in the tomb after dying a violent death. 35,000 or more Americans each year die a violent death by gun and are placed in the tomb. You know, after that story, we hear in Luke's Gospel, two disciples who are walking away from Jerusalem and they are so discouraged. And the risen Jesus comes along and walks beside them, although they don't know it's the risen Jesus. And he asks them what they're talking about as they walk along. And they say, well, there's this man, Jesus, and we had hoped, we had hoped that he'd be the Messiah. Hope in the past tense. And sometimes we gather and we recognize all those deaths by gun and, and we say, we had hoped we could do better than this. We had hoped that we could have gun safety. We had hoped that there'd be laws passed that, that address the public health crisis of gun violence. We had hope, hope in the past tense. But then it says that the disciples walk along, Jesus is with them, they go in to eat, Jesus breaks the bread, and the next line is he vanishes from their sight. You know, people who know their New Testament Greek better than I do say that's a bad translation. He didn't vanish from their sight. In the Greek, he disappeared among them. He was still with them. And Jesus is still with us. The Prince of Peace is still with us. Jesus is still looking for a world that's full of mercy and compassion and of hope. And so we still hope. And we invite political leaders and business leaders like those here at Smith & Wesson to address the crisis of gun violence in our country. Let us pray. Living God, give us the courage to confront our false gods and to protest the needless deaths caused by gun violence. Help us to rise above that nothing can be done and great grant us the conviction to advocate for change. Keep alive in us your dream of a world where children are safe and all of us live together without fear. All this we pray in the name of the one who offered his life, that we may live, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.